good morning everybody mark again here weatherman plus happy thursday to all of you now i'm gonna show you the latest update on invest 98l and it is going to still intensify as it goes towards the western caribbean still becoming a tropical storm by jamaica a hurricane literally 12 hours later than intensifying even further and going into our gulf now from what i can see not only from the model data also the ensembles this is going to the southeast of the u.s let me show you and as we look for previous storms that has formed around that time from september 21st all the way to october 4th we had major hurricane lily started in the same region and went in this direction in the gulf and it went towards louisiana we also had around this time september 14th all the way to september 26th in 2002 we had hurricane isidore that went this way strengthened up right by jamaica and it went by the yucatan and still went into the gulf still went towards louisiana and it's not taking the same track but the one that reminds me most of what we're dealing with was hurricane matthew in 2002. so september 28th it was by windward islands by october 1st it was strengthening up intensifying and it curved towards the bahamas and towards the southeast by october 9th so as we look at the possible locations where this track could take and you can see the automatic tropical cyclone forecast that literally in 72 hours it will be right here in this group right by jamaica and four days moving to the northwestern caribbean and in five days it will be in between cuba and the yucatan somewhere in this region now the canadian model the average shows that it will go that way and it will curve over cuba and go towards southeastern florida even the control member of the canadian shows that it will go towards florida and curve back and then head north towards the panhandle of florida just like we've seen with the control member of the euro a couple of days ago and the gfs even though it lately it has taken a little western of a push but you can see that the average shows it will go the same direction right over cuba and get into the eastern gulf of mexico so when we look at the tracks for the euro this is where it's all expected to be literally in 48 hours and as you go towards 72 hours very tight grouping of pretty much where it's going to be at but once it gets past 72 hours then it's going to start intensifying and once you go towards five days you can see the broad area of where everything is expected to be more than likely favoring this region right here these couple tracks to the west are by themselves but we do have to take them into factor but we literally have to wait because we don't know what's going to happen with this trough coming down is it going to pull it to the southeast or like the gfs is seen is going to miss it and go a little further and northern in the gulf of mexico so as we look at the latest intensity you can see in 72 hours it is by almost all the ensembles going to be a tropical storm as it's passing by jamaica and literally in five days it'll be somewhere on the hurricane level now what i see with the temperatures as well as the deep ocean heat content exactly where this wave is going it will be rapid intensification now you can still see on your lower level winds that you are still getting that shear from the outflow from fiona and it is impacting the northern side of this wave now this is keeping it where all the precipitation is off of its center it's not vertically stacked yet and it literally would take about three days before it gets away from that before it can finally start forming up and you can see this when you look at your relative humidity you can see that you have all this precipitation around your storm but this is where your center at and all of the precipitation at the lower level is further south right here because it's getting sheared off still from the outflow from fiona so it's not vertically stacked and as you keep on going you can see it stays sheared off from its center it is not vertically stacked as you go to 24 hours and as you keep moving towards 48 hours it tries to get a surface low but it can't get it's still getting this outflow from fiona still giving it shear still getting some easterly winds going to the west keeping the lower level center off of the center of circulation on the ground level so as you keep on going towards jamaica you can see it starts getting its precipitation around it but it's still not vertically stacked in 60 hours but once you get to where it gets around 72 hours this is right where national hurricane center is starting to see it you see you do get a center of low pressure but you still have it not quite vertically stacked it's still a little bit to the west of the center but you can see quickly after that that it does get vertically stacked then it's ready to start intensifying this is four days away this is about as far as we can go we won't know the track of this system 
until it gets a surface low, until it gets good vertical stack, and we know exactly where this is going. But in this run, you can see that literally as it passes by Jamaica, it starts intensifying. It goes to a tropical storm, and literally in 18 hours later, it strengthens to a hurricane in 18 hours. There's a lot of warm temperatures, a lot of deep ocean heat content, and this is where it's going to do its rapid intensification. There's no more shear. There's nothing in its way. So because of the shear, still keeping this system weak for the next 72 hours where it just can't get vertically stacked. They still have it at 70% in 48 hours, 90% in five days. But you see how they moved it over a little bit where formation is going to happen sometime around here within the next three to five days. So here we are at National Hurricane Center in 24 hours. You can see how it's just a weak wave moving to the west. In 48 hours, it is gonna be moving west to the northwest. And in 72 hours, it's gonna be right here below Jamaica. And this is where it's gonna start getting vertically stacked and a surface low. And this is where we will know more about the track and impacts afterwards at this point now you can see at this point gfs already has it as a tropical storm in 72 hours which would seem a little bit impossible to be that strong because it's not vertically stacked from the shear so gfs takes it a little too strong i think it'll be a little bit weaker the euro in 72 hours shows it just starts to get some thunderstorms but you can see how it's all west side loaded on its thunderstorms it's not all the way around because it's still getting those easterly winds pushing it to the west and that's more of a reliable outcome that it still would not be a tropical storm in 72 hours however once it gets away from the shear you can see that it starts intensifying as it gets away from that shear and literally in 18 hours later you have a tropical storm on the western side of jamaica and as you keep going it just keeps intensifying but literally five days would take us right about here so we really should take the impacts with a grain of salt because we still don't have a surface low although it is trending that it will get pulled to the north because of this trough and then it will go to the southeast as it gets pulled out to the east now another factor is your sea surface temperatures you can see right here in 72 hours that is leaving all this warm tropical in the eastern caribbean you see how it ate up some of that warm heat but it's going towards 30 degrees high 80s and you see how it just eats it up as it passes by and just intensifies in all of that heat. A very strong system. Now this is the H-Wharf. The H-Wharf takes it where it's a major hurricane literally in five days. But when you look at your deep ocean heat content, you can see that right when it leaves past Jamaica, not only the warm temperatures on the sea surface, you can also see that the deep temperatures down below when it starts upwelling and pulling energy this is just more energy for this storm to intensify so as it strengthens up takes the sea surface temperatures and it keeps pulling the water from down below from upwelling it's going to pull very warm temperatures and just keep feeding this storm it will be rapid intensification on the western caribbean whether it goes to the southwest whether it goes to the northwest there will be rapid intensification in the Caribbean. So in 72 hours, you can see you still have this upper level high that we spoke about yesterday and it's still messing up this system and it's still getting some easterlies, giving it some shear. That's why it's still going to be weak. That's why all the precipitation is still on the west side of the system and the south side. It's not around the center. But once it gets away from that shear and the upper level high lets it go, this is the direction that it has to flow. It can even flow with a little bounce to the south, eventually headed north, just like the GFS sees, or it's just going to head to that north, northwest, just like the Euro and a lot of other models has been seeing. Literally in 90 hours by Sunday, we are looking at a tropical storm going by Jamaica. And then as you go towards the Cayman Islands, we are looking at a hurricane for the Cayman Islands. And this is literally in five days four to five days you already have a hurricane at your front door then we get this trough coming in and you can see these winds it wants to naturally carry it to the east northeast but as we get this trough we get a high pressure that actually blocks right here from it going east so it has to keep going north i'll show you after it goes north and it gets away from this high pressure then this big old trough grabs a hold of this system because it's very strong in the upper levels and it pulls it to the east northeast on that trough 
So it is going to go in this direction. This is the only direction it can go. So you can see this best on your Vorticity at your 500 millibars. As you look at it, you can see in 60 hours that it's not getting rotation all the way around this system. It's not able to still get a surface low and start intensifying. But once it starts getting towards 72 hours, then it has a way to start getting a surface low. It gets vertically stacked in 72 to 84 hours, three to four days. And you can see the winds all the way around it. It is really starting to strengthen up. Then in four days, 84 hours away, and it gets vertically stacked. It has rotation all the way around this system and it starts strengthening heading to the west, northwest by the streamlined winds. Now, this is five days. It can still go anywhere at this point, but if you take a look, you have a big high pressure over here circling this around. That's what pulls this to the east, northeast. You also have this trough coming down that will pull this once it gets to the higher levels. And you can see right here, a lot of this is going over to Yucatan and a little bit over Central America. So it's still hitting landfall. It's a very broad storm. But once you keep going a little bit further, you can see that the high pressure expands out. That keeps this going to the north. This is five and a half days away. As you keep going, you can see the high pressure is still expanding out. That's why this does not miss Florida or hit only southern Florida because it has to go northern because of this high pressure spinning it around, pulling this straight north. But once this high pressure lets go, and you see it grabs it real good in six days, keeping it north, and as it goes away, the high pressure lets it go literally in six days, then the trough grabs a hold of it. Then it's in the trough, and now the trough is going to take this, and since the trough is going to the east, it's going to pull this to the east. So at this point, you already have an impact on Florida because it is going to be east side loaded, but it's going to rip right up Florida and anytime from this direction to this direction, this area is where it has to travel before it gets pulled out. And you can see how it takes it northern over Florida, Georgia, South Carolina as it gets pulled away by that trough. Now the difference with GFS, not only is it already too strong, cause you can already see on your 500 millibars that in 72 hours, it's got some good winds coming around, but it don't have that southwesterly to southeasterly flow real strong yet. And that makes perfect sense with the shear that it's seeing. But once you keep going, you see GFS drifts a little bit further before it strengthens up. And as these storms strengthen, it pulls itself to the north and it takes it to the Western Caribbean in five days. So right here with GFS, over here by the Cayman Islands with the Euro. But you can also see with the GFS as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, that this trough, this trough that the Euro sees it pulling away, this trough passes the GFS up and there's nothing to pull it out to the Southeast. You even get a big high pressure expanding all the way out according to the GFS. And that would make this head north from the Yucatan rather than going to the southeast because it's still getting blocked by that high pressure. Then when the high pressure retracts back, we are literally seven days away. Please take this with a grain of salt. We will keep analyzing this as we keep getting closer. Now GFS takes it to where it misses that trough to the southeast. And when that high pressure lets it go, it continues its track to the north. And what we see this morning is we see Louisiana. What I see in the ensembles is no matter what, even with that western push, it will be pulled around by this Bermuda High and it will go to the southeast. I'll show you. So as you look with the 0Z with the Euro, you can see literally 1,004 millibars in 72 hours. And then as it goes towards 84 hours, four days away, it starts getting vertically stacked. It starts strengthening, then literally turns into a tropical storm 12 hours later, this is by Sunday, September 25th. Then as you keep on going, you can see literally it turns right into a hurricane by Monday, September 26th at 4 a.m. 18 hours later, it's already strengthened up to a hurricane. And as you keep going on the track, you can see it still intensifies according to the Euro. Taking it to the southeast, being pulled by the trough, a very strong system down to a 946 major hurricane going over Florida. And this is by September 29th.
and the euro is showing a dramatic amount of rainfall headed for a lot of people. It's going to affect Jamaica. It's going to affect Cayman Islands, Cuba, Florida Keys, Florida, the whole southeast, even up the east coast. Look how it just goes right up the east coast with all of that heavy precipitation as well. So there's going to be a lot more impacts. It's not just going to impact Florida. So in four days, it really starts to wound up its winds as well. So far, you have weak winds, maybe tropical storm wind gusts for Jamaica. You are getting some rainfall out of this. But as we go further, you see how it intensifies right over the Cayman Islands. Strong winds, major hurricane right there with that black as it goes towards Florida and the southeast. Now, so far, the Euro is showing that you'll have tropical storm force winds gusts towards Jamaica, and then it starts strengthening up to hurricane force wind gusts for the Cayman Islands. But this thing gets really strong out here in the Gulf of Mexico to 130 to 140 to 150 miles per hour wind gusts coming with the system. Very much a major hurricane. We still don't know the full track yet, but so far this is what we have for this morning. GFS takes that western track, and so far in the deterministics, it shows it going to the western Gulf of Mexico, maybe Texas, maybe Louisiana. But what I'm seeing in the ensemble is that no matter what, this will curve back to the southeast. But here's the latest track with the GFS, already having it a tropical storm in 72 hours, and you know how I feel about that. I don't see it being that strong in 72 hours. But as it takes that westward track, it shows a potential hurricane impacts for Nicaragua, Honduras, as it goes towards Belize and the Yucatan. And literally, this is already five days away as it goes into the Gulf and potentially goes towards Texas, Louisiana. Just sits there and stalls and grows for a couple of days. You can also see with this 6Z to update this morning that it's still showing tropical storm strength in 72 hours. I think it'll be a little below that as it goes by Jamaica, but it's still showing the same path. A hurricane for Nicaragua, Honduras, still going towards Belize, still going towards the Yucatan in five days. Then after that, it still shows it gets that big stall from that cold front in the Gulf of Mexico, sits there for days, and I don't know if it wants to wobble west or if it wants to wobble towards Louisiana still. So as we take a look at all the ensembles and see what the more than likely outcome is with the GFS, since it is the only one showing it would take that Western push. Look right here. This is your control member. This is in four and a half days passing by Jamaica, starting to strengthen up. And then as it goes on that Western push, you'll see that it does meet up with that trough. That trough comes down here and it does pull it after that Western push to the East, Southeast, the more than likely outcome according to the GFS. And that is what the Euro is seeing as well. And remember, as Fiona goes by today, I'm showing you don't have no threats from the winds, but you do have a tornado threat still for the Northeast and it has downgraded. It took away to 5%. You do have a wind and a hail threat coming out of that the most. Still, you have Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, Rochester, New York, Syracuse, New York, and Erie, Pennsylvania. Plus, as you look at the track of Fiona, you can see the wind fields out here that none of these wind fields is going towards the East Coast. So you would have to worry about riptides, things of that sort, but you're not getting any of the winds from Fiona. But thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I will keep you all updated. It's literally 72 hours before we know more about this system. Then I will start the afternoon updates. So God bless you all. May you have a very blessed day today. I have a short prayer for you to say get your Thursday going. Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Give God praise. Give him praise every day. Be thankful for everything you receive. Above all things, be humble and be thankful. All glory does go to God forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very great day today, everybody.